This is Showtime in A24's The Curse, which follows Whitney and Asher Siegel, played respectively by two-time Oscar winner Emma Stone and primetime Emmy nominee Nathan Fielder. They're a newlywed couple. They're, str they're struggling to transform the small community of Española, New Mexico, with their HGTV-like indie reality series, Flipland-thropy. But... Their, their efforts are complicated when, when a flawed reality TV producer, Dougie, played by co-creator Benny Safdie, sees an opportunity in their story. As the series unfolds, the couple find themselves caught in a mysterious web of ethical and moral gray zones, all while trying to keep their relationships afloat. The Curse has already received a Golden Globe, WGA, and Indie Spirit nominations. Before I bring out today's guests, unfortunately, by the way, Emma Stone and Benny Safdie couldn't be here today due to a production schedule. But before I bring out today's guests, here's a clip. Maybe it's worth changing some of the language in the letter. I, I could call James right now and see if he's okay with like different wording. Because some of the wording is a little, a little in intense I'm letter. Sorry, what, 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 are you saying? what are you saying? The wording was scaring them. We're, we're not selling to them. They don't want to live here. They literally said they don't support the tribe. I, th I think they might have just been confused. Are you defending them? No, no, baby, not at all. Don't, you know what? Give the deposit back. There are so many people who killed to live here. I didn't spend... Sorry, sorry. I, I didn't spend three years of my life with that this house to just give it to someone who's not going to care about it or care about the community. How do you not see what I'm seeing? I, I I'm do. so confused. I do see. I see everything. I, yo, I yo, yes. yo. What's going on? What'd you do? What'd you say? They're done. They're not, they don't want to do the community garden. They don't want to do anything. Cookout, it's over, they're saying. Hmm. We're not selling to them anymore. Wow, really? Vic too. So what are we going to do? What's the show going to be at? Who are we going to follow? Tell me. We had a backup offer. The college girl who came with her. Okay, I could call her. Can she get yeah. here today? No, she no. get here today. She's, she's 20. She's 20. Then it's going to look like that's the community we're building. And it's look, like a college town. Fine. No, that's the wrong idea. It can't be anybody. All right, you can use her dad. You can use fucking Remy. We'll take off his dumb hat and put on a shirt for my car. It'll be great. What? Yeah, on my Bahama show, we did it all the time. No real buyers. It was just fucking pretend. This could be anybody. Right? Find somebody. Remy, can you shut that off, please? Let's welcome the production designer of The Curse, Katie Byron. Her credits include Don't Worry Darling and Zola. And the star, co-creator, executive producer, writer, and director of The Curse, Mr. Nathan Fielder. So tell us about teaming up with Benny. Um, did you guys know each other for quite some time? And, and, and also fusing your styles together. Yeah. Uh, Benny is... Uh, Benny and I met. Uh, we, we were fans of each other's work, and, and we, we met each other. And then, um, you know, we, this idea just kind of came about just when we were hanging out. And we were sort of convinced it, it couldn't really be a show. It was sort of just an inside joke for a bit and then we uh we kept uh talking about it and then it turned into a show but we we both really we, you know realism and is 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 really important to us and we 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 share like a, a view of what we of of how to build the world and all that and that was a good tone is so important to both of us and i think that was like a good starting point Sorry, was that a bad answer? That, that was that was sort a of perfect. Bad. That was a great answer. I'm like I was told that like they're about to serve you guys lunch and no, so No, no, meeting meeting I afterwards. Assume, I in my head, the back of my head I'm like the all these people are hungry. I uh, no, no, no. And I so had I'm to just keep thinking about here. I okay. had to keep them here. 
Anyways. I had to keep them here. You guys are, I'm thinking about the lunch. You guys are probably thinking about lunch. But you got a, you got a what huge, they're gonna... you got a huge response here. They're very excited. They're okay, not, okay, okay. They're not just here. They're well, not here for the pizza. I don't well, even know well, if it's pizza. Well, some people are here for the food. Let's be real. But is the quality good? Are they giving, is the quality of the food they're serving good? Okay. Yeah. Great. That's important. No, but they're, they're here you for you. Because came all this way and... And I hope lunch is uh, just as good or better than breakfast. Yeah. No, no. Okay. But, um, you know, this is, this is a great series. It, it's got this docu-style. There's the, complex, the, the complexities between you and Emma. Was there something, you know, that you and Benny were looking at? Like, did you look at these HGTV type of couples and you're like, eh, we're going to call BS on that? Well, I don't know about BS. I, I think it's just like, you know, we had this, we had this idea of, uh, you know, you know, this when some when when someone says something to you, like, how real does it become? And is it, is it the outside world that is doing things, or is it what's going on in your own head? And so that was like the jumping off point, I think, for the show to have something like that, where the viewer is like unsure if something's going on or it's just the characters building their own downfall. And then the HGTV thing, that was Benny's idea to, to kind of look at that world. So I think, I, I think there's a lot you don't see in the shows and everyone obviously knows like, you know, reality TV, a lot of it is faked, but we also live in a time where I, I think that everyone, um, you know, feels a pressure to sort of like tell their own story and who they are maybe, which is weird because probably people didn't have to do that like before social media and all that. So if you're not a storyteller, like how do you tell your story? And that could drive you insane, I would think. Cause so, you know, Whitney um, has to like, is like both resistant and leaning on this reality show producer to help tell this story and I, it sort of like becomes this weird mishmash of like what she believes and what someone else sees in a person. And uh, anyways, yeah, I, again, another bad answer, but you know, no, I'm trying, no. I'm trying my best. Hopefully you can get a sense of just from the vibe of what I'm saying <laughs> as opposed to like the exact words. Cause I think if this was a quoted, this would sound really stupid, no. but <laughs> you're very eloquent. You know, if I if I could just come out here and, and tell a, a you know a great story, I, I I probably wouldn't be making stuff like that. I'd I'd be doing so. Anyways, this is a uh, my we a weakness. Um, but you know, Katie's here and she's a great speaker. And <laughs> Katie Katie built so you didn't see it in this one, but the if for those who have seen the show, there are these like uh, Emma's character Whitney specializes in building these passive homes, these uh, which are eco-friendly, net zero energy homes. And her homes had a mirror design. And we constructed these structures. For re Sorry, I'm taking over no, your no, job. No, anyways. Go ahead. go ahead. No, keep going. Keep going. No, anyways. But it's amazing. It's like amazing that we like, you know, built these things. You ask a question about it because I'm, I'm just. Well, like, the, the, go into the big build of, the, of that. And in the conversations you had, I'm I'm equally as more, as uncomfortable as Nathan is up here. <laughs> um, yeah, so we we built three of these mirrored passive homes. They uh, well, two of them are built as exoskeletons on top of existing homes. So we found two. We, we were looking for the neighborhood that this um, show could take place in, and there were like there was one empty lot, and then there were two houses that felt like we could like s basically build uh, an exoskeleton on top of the houses, um, which required a lot of math and um, you know really amazing engineering on behalf of our construction team. But these like these homes were built kind of in the same way that Doug Aiken built his mirrored house in the desert. Um, we used like a, a different materials, but um, in the same way where they're wheel welded, steel constructed, uh, yeah basically like exoskeletons and mounted with this mirrored plexiglass um, on top of them. How long did it take to get from soup to nuts, drafting oh. it to building? 
Well, I think like actually when I was interviewed, you guys were like, can they be mirrored? And it was like, oh boy. I think. Yeah, that was like a last minute sort of addition. They weren't Which, supposed yeah. to be at first mirrored. Experience. And when you want a job, you just have to say yes. <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> No, but I think it was one of those things where it was like, I saw the potential that it was it would be the coolest idea. And, you know, also just the idea of the, the house disappearing in the landscape, reflecting the neighborhood, um, also just like the complications that... It, actually, when, when I was starting to come up with the idea of why maybe we shouldn't build the mirrored houses to Nathan and Benny, I would come and say like, well, they might catch the neighborhood on fire. And then Benny and Nathan were like, we'll put that in the script, that's amazing. And then there was another time where I was like, also like there's this issue with birds like hitting the homes. And then it was like, let's put that in the script, that's amazing. <laughs> so it was like all of these issues, I was like, okay, we're, we're really finding the show as we went. But it did burn your car. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, so I... She had a piece of, okay, you say it. So, so when we were scouting, Nathan was like, can we get a piece of this plexiglass? that we can just take everywhere so I can know what the world is reflecting. So I'd go stand in front of these houses with this piece of mirrored plexi, and I'd say, like, you know, okay, this is what you'd see. This is what would be reflected. And so this piece of mirrored plexi lived in the back of my car, and within four hours, it burned the roof of my car. Okay. So it was a rental, so it was production was okay. And then even when the homes were actually constructed, it started we started to notice like this brown line that would cut like across a tree, across the ground. We were like, what is that? And it was the path of the sun every day. And so we had to cover the houses when like we would take it off for shooting and then, yeah. yeah. And then like we had cranes, construction guys would go up and like, and then cover this entire house as if it was tented with, for termites essentially. And, and this would have to happen like every single day and then I remember when we were like shooting for a long period of time, I was like, okay, wh at what point, at what, is it eight hours that things start to go crazy? Like, are we gonna, <laughs> are we, you know what? But um, luckily it was, it was all safe. One, one thing Katie uh, brought up that I thought was so interesting, like you saw in the clip the inside of the, the homes here and Whitney, uh, Emma's character is, is like, very controlling about how others use her home and after she sells the home she still wants to because to hold the passive home certification you can't add like an ac unit in you can't do these things and she feels that that's like disrespecting and and katie wanted to do like the way she constructed the insides of the homes were these built-in things where the buyer like couldn't put in their own shelf because the shelf was like in the wall and explain your philosophy on that, because I thought that was so cool when you... Yeah, I mean, there's that, like, hot shot architect move of, like, I have this idea of how I want the house to be dressed. I know, like, Alexandra Gerard, who was also a big reference for us, um, it, like, it was, he, he even dictated what type of cutlery would go into the kitchen. So it was like, oh, my God, if Whitney created these homes, she'd be so specific. Like, they, this, this would when she would stage them, the intention would be like, you'd buy exactly what she had. And, um, and, and her house was technically almost like a stage representation of like her ideal version of, of what this house is. So yeah, like the idea is that there's no real other place to put the bed, you know, it, it's only against that wall. There's only one type of couch that fits into that living room. And so yeah, the idea that like, you can't, you can't change it. It always will be what it is. So the other cool thing about the show is that you casted um, actual actual people that lived that lived in the in the community. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, yeah. Benny and I were always like, you know, realism and and being because we were in this actual city of Española in New Mexico, which is about thirty minutes north of Santa Fe, and it's a it's about you know it, it's like the locations that were we're using, we're using the real names for a lot of them, and, and so we really wanted it to feel, our goal was basically, if you live in Española, people would be like, they sort, they pretty much got it good, hopefully. <laughs> that was like our goal, like we wanted it to feel really authentic, so we wrote a script, obviously, but, you know, I, I went there a year in advance, and like, you know, spent some time in the area, and talked to a lot of people, and, you know, then we, 
wrote the script around those things to make sure it was accurate. And then when we were there, when it came to casting, we'd often, we'd find a location of, let's say, like a taco shop, and, you know, we would need, there was a person in the script who worked there, but then the, there was someone who worked there. And we, you know, if it's a small part, we were sort of like, you know, do you want to do it to people? Because it, we could never, in our imaginations, we could never be as accurate as, like, what the real people that were there. And, you know, fortunately, the community was really, like, game to collaborate with us on it. And, you know, that was the interesting thing. The element in the show, too, is that with these home flippers, you know, and these shows, you see these people come into a community often and impose their sort of will on it and then, like, leave. And so we were sort of conscious, too, that we as, like, filmmakers are coming into this community and, even though it's temporary, like, constructing these mirrored homes in the neighborhood. And so we, we sort of wanted that to be a part of the show when you're watching it to be thinking about, you know, the level of realism and incorporating real people. And we even had people... You know how when you're shooting in an area, you might see, like, it's like a mistake in movies where someone in the background will, like, look at the camera? And that's like, you know, if you're, they're shooting in New York and you're like, oh, that must be, like, a real person. But we actually had extras. We directed them to look at the camera. So it feels like... So you get the real feeling, like, oh, they're really imposing. So there's a lot of people in the show that are, like, looking at the camera, but we told them to do it. And, like, we were almost staging, like, they're just a guy who happened to be in the room. or it, So it feels like a mistake. And so the viewer will feel that, like, oh, my God, are they okay with this? Like, we wanted people to think about that because that's what we were thinking about, too. We were just really wanted to make sure we weren't, like, doing the thing that the characters were doing, even though we sort of are a little bit. Yeah, it was really meta. I actually had to... We had a consultant and... and a an indigenous artist worked with us as a consultant and I had to um, approach them to sign the release. And it was like two weeks before we were shooting the release scene with Kara and it was just very, there was a lot of meta stuff happening in, in the show where it was, we were all convinced that it was a show within a show within a show. We actually <laughs> were like waiting for, to find out that it was. <laughs> oh really? Oh my God. <laughs> Seems like a ter uh, terrible environment to <laughs> work in. <laughs> well, because, I'm sorry. Like, everything kept on lining up. Like it was just like this. What is hap What is? I mean. Well, that's a thing. We were yeah. We were trying to be so accurate that we ended up like like Katie was saying. It's just like if something actually happened that was different than what we thought. We were like, well, this is how they do things here. Let's involve it. So then, yeah, there started to be like all these parallels in in terms of. Yeah, reality was like folding in on itself continually. But you know, with them making a reality show and them being conscious of these things and us being conscious of these things, it's like you can look at the characters and be like, well, these people are absurd. And obviously it's like some of the stuff's like very exaggerated. But like there's a part of, you know, these characters that is very relatable where you sort of decide like what's enough for you in terms of doing good or the limits of your charity, everyone has a limit to their charity, to how charitable they'll be. And so I think in the show, you, s you get to see the characters like living on that line of like when their generosity conflicts with their livelihoods and how they handle that. And, but yeah. Have you received any phone calls from? What, what am I? I don't know. Yeah. Have you <laughs> have you received any phone calls from HGTV with any notes? Like, how would they know my number? <laughs> I don't know. You know, like like they looked me up or something. Or they they find your assistant or something, and or they call Showtime. Yeah, they call. They were like, "Thank you so much for the exposure you're giving us, and <laughs> thank you for talking about." our brand, <laughs> we're always trying to get our name out there, and we really appreciate everything you did. So yeah, they I get calls all the time from the CEO <laughs> of HGTV. Showtime in A24's The Curse. Katie Byron, production designer, executive producer, Enjoy star, your lunch. director, writer, Nathan Fielder. Yes. <laughs>